Okay, so now I'm going to talk about other, other garlic diseases. And perhaps the, the next one in, in importance uh, to white rot is this one. Uh, this is called uh, botrytis rot. Uh, very, very common uh, disease of not only onion, but especially garlic. It, uh, as you can see here, it takes over the bulb much the way white rot does, but it doesn't persist in, in uh, soils for uh, lengthy periods of time. So that's a good thing about it. Okay, the other diseases I'm going to discuss uh, are uh, botrytis, of, of course, and fusarium basal rot is another important disease. And fusarium and botrytis also produce a, a, a storage, uh, an important storage decays uh, of garlic as well. Uh, a third one called penicillium, and I have a sample of both botrytis and penicillium uh, that we'll look at later. Uh, it's an important disease in storage. Other diseases, downy mildew, uh, pink rot, uh, touch on the viruses briefly, and bulb and stem nematode. Okay, fusarium basal rot. The key thing about uh, basal rot is that it, it occurs, uh, uh, especially in uh, uh, wet fields, number one, uh, it enjoys very warm temperatures. It causes a, a decay of the basal plate area of both onion and garlic, as you can see here. And then it moves up into the stem right here. This is a more severe infection. These are less so. Actually, this one has fusarium basal rot, but also it has a gray mold there, which is a petrita. So it's, that one's got a double wing. It occurs worldwide on onion, garlic, chives, and shallots. And there are more than one uh, fusarium species involved. As I mentioned, it, it, no, I don't, I don't think I did mention, it does occur both in the field and it does occur as a storage rot. Okay, uh, fusarium symptoms. If you see a, a tip die back and yellowing of leaves like you would with white rot, uh, you pull up the plant and uh, look at it, see if you've got a, a white to pinkish mold on the uh, basal plate area of the, of the garlic. And again, I'll have a sample of that for you. Late season infections, of course, cause storage problems. So here you get the, the, the yellowing and the dieback of the foliage. And if you examine here, the, you've lost the roots and uh, it's gone into the basal plate and therefore water and nutrients can't get up to the upper part of the plant. And this is uh, fusarium uh, uh, rot of garlic cloves that has occurred in storage. Now you don't see any white mold here, and if you don't see any white mold, uh, or the white pinkish mold, all you have to do is put the, uh, the cloves in a, a plastic bag, uh, put a little bit of damp tissue into the bag, close it up, wait a couple of days, and you'll get a characteristic uh, uh, pinkish white mold. And again, you'll see samples of that later. So the disease cycle, this is a soil-borne disease, uh, and it's carried on on garlic cloves. So if you buy uh, infected garlic, uh, then you're going to introduce it into your field. It does have uh, sorry, it does have tough overwintering uh, uh, spores too, but they don't last more than three or four years in the field. Uh, it, it it's a warm temperature disease, optimum temperature 25 to 28 degrees Celsius, and wet weather close to harvest does increase your, your uh, storage problems with this disease. Okay, for, for, for zarin management, uh, four, four year rotation with uh, non-allium crops, cure bulbs properly, and I'm not, and, and uh, store them at proper temperatures. And again, use, uh, we keep coming back to this, use disease-free uh, cloves for planting. 